uh, in regards to the, uh, uh, the garbage collection in Nasinu. So Nasinu being the largest municipality, garbage collection is an issue there, sir. Because uh, uh, we have noted that the kitchen garbage, which is supposed to be collected in the morning, is collected late in the afternoon, sir. And you know, the stray dogs scatter the rubbish all around. And in the afternoon, when you reach home, sir, it is an ISO. And also the, the monthly uh, green garbage, sir. It is supposed to be collected in, in my area, in Balalevu, first Tuesday every month, sir. I have discussed this as alluded to by the Honorable Minister. I have discussed this with him, sir, a number of times. And even this morning, we spoke about it. Sir, our, our purpose here is not to criticize, sir. We would like to improve the services of uh, all the municipalities uh, and, and whole of Nasinu, uh, as, as, as is uh, alluded to by my, my colleague. Yesterday, sir, I went to pick my cousin uh, from Igbo place in Nandawa. And right in front of his house, a huge pile of rubbish. And upon inquiry, sir, he told me the council promised to collect the rubbish and everyone has dumped there, but the council did not turn up, sir. Sir, the rubbish there is an obstruction to the vehicle, sir. I had to wait for another car to, to go across, sir. So these are some of the, and it, it's whole of Nasinu, sir which is suffering. And I don't know, sir, I, I just don't understand why this is happening, because when Fiji First was in government, everything was done on time, sir. And I've raised this with the minister. Everything was done on time. There was no rubbish. Yeah. And, and, and so I don't know. Sir, I understand. I, I, I understand because during Fiji First time, there was some agreement with the, the, the Suva City Council and the, and the Nasinu Town Council, sir. And, and in terms of exchanging or using the rubbish collection trucks, this, this uh, uh, agreement was there. But I don't know, sir, what has changed, or I don't know, the, the policies have changed, that, that this has happened. And I, I'm raising, and I raised this with the minister, that this is only happening, uh, happening since your government has in come, in come into place. So, 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 so there, there are many issues, sir. Uh, and, 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 and the reason I'm raising all this, sir, is we want all these uh, uh, the, the, the services to be to be provided. Nasinu being the largest municipality, and and minister has been talking about. Uh, he's just uh, raised the issue of uh, uh, the, the town council elections. Sir, uh, uh, I know it has been said in this parliament that, that uh, the town council elections will take place, sir. But today, to date, we have not seen any uh, any any legislation or any 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 policy uh, in regards to that to, to regulate the, the the municipal council elections. So time is is running. As you know, my May is already gone. We are uh, uh, June and uh, June and July. We'll be talking about the budget, say, and we are left with August. Minister has given a time frame, saying that towards the end of this year. So, so end of this year means could be November, December. But, but remember, there are certain processes, sir, which which cannot be, uh, no, which cannot uh, cannot be uh, put put fast forward. See, uh, Mr. Speaker, say, let me um, uh, just, um, you know, it's quite interesting to hear um, people like um, Honourable. Uh, M. Chan and uh, Honorable Brihendra Lal, you know, I consider them to be Johnny come lately to Fiji First Party and politics. And perhaps they, they don't understand and they have no idea, have no idea what this government and this minister has been landed with in terms of dealing with the municipal council and cities. And the report of the committee, the Auditor General's report, Mr. Speaker, say, very clearly lays down the fundamental problem with respect to the management and the delivery of services in towns and city councils in this country. And the blame for what is there today squarely rests on the previous government, and some of them are sitting on there, sitting there, sitting there, sitting there, and, and pontificating 
about governance, about how city council should be managed, and Honorable Birendra Lal went all over the place about elections without even acknowledging that for 15 years or so they had, they had suppressed democracy of the right pairs in this country. And they should, Mr. Speaker, say at least have a little bit of decency. Little bit of decency. Little bit of decency. It's coming. This government, Mr. Speaker, say, has announced that the election will be held. There is work already being done. There is reviews. The process is in place. And they will know in time, in good time, when the election will be because I know they want to go and lie very quickly, you know, about what's going on. <laughs> Honorable Hem Chan, Honorable Hem Chan, Honorable, Honorable Hem Chan, again, hey, Johnny come lately, I would say. He talked about Bougainvillea in Nandi. Overgrown, overgrown. Point of order, sir. What's the point? Yes. Honorable Speaker. What order? I think, if I may, sir, point of order, 74-1, open it and read. Honorable Speaker, 74-1 reads, and let me read it to you for the 151st time. Any member may raise a point of order if there's a breach of the standing orders and the practices of parliament. Read. The breach is, sir, this gentleman should by now, after so many years, sir, Learn the language of parliament, sir. Don't be offensive. These are members of parliament who have, whether it's six months or six years, sir, be a little respectful. What is this Johnny come lately garbage, sir? I think he ought to be censured, sir, if he, if he, if he needs to stop insulting these young MPs and these MPs who have just joined us. They have their opinion, you have your opinion, but there is no reason for him to denigrate them, sir. He should be experienced enough to know that. Thank you, sir. Please uh, continue, Honorable. Continue, sir. Thank, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Say, all I was referring to in, in the context of Mr. Speaker, that he's, he's new, he's new in Fiji First, and new in Parliament, he has not looked at what had happened in the last 10 or 15 years in the city and town councils. He talked about the Bougainvillea, overgrown Bougainvillea. Let me tell him, let me tell him. He should go and read some of the overpaid, long-grown Bougainvillea, and the responsibility of that falls directly on the Fiji First government. In fact, in fact, Mr. Speaker said, in fact, Mr. Speaker said, those Bougainvillea, the way it was put in place, should have been investigated by FICEC long ago. The contract and the over, the cost, the cost of doing that. So he doesn't, that's the context in why I said that they don't know. Let me talk about the rubbish collection that they talked about. I was in Nasinu the other day, Mr. Speaker, say, with the Nasinu Town Council uh, administrators and the launch of the new Nasinu Chamber of Commerce. And basically, what they said to me was that the previous government, the previous administrator, they had, they had, Mr. Speaker, they had, they had, they don't like that. They don't like that because they talked about rubbish. The Sinu Town Council, Mr. Speaker, say, had its own trucks, own trucks. Somebody decided that those trucks would be transferred to Suba, a new contract would be given to people here, and this is the problem why it's not working. And the new administrators have decided that as soon as the contract ends in, in the next month or so, this month, the senior town council will have its own trucks, will have its own processes, will have its own system of collecting rubbish, and that will be done. This is what, Mr. Speaker, when these, when these honorable members of parliament from the opposition come into this parliament and pontificate about what's going wrong, they actually forget what has happened. Let me also add, Mr. Speaker, say, let me also add. Now we are grappling, Mr. Speaker, say, with 
the collection of rates. Town and city councils are struggling to even put funds in the market. I went to, no, sorry, market, Mr. Speaker, say one day. And all the vendors were complaining about the heat, about there no fans. And the vendors themselves, Mr. Speaker, were saying, we don't mind paying stall fees, but we need fans. Because they built a market, they tried to be populist, they didn't want to collect rates, they didn't want to charge anybody, and they left everything, including the services, undelivered. Suba City Council, Mr. Speaker, say with 11,400 rate payers, owes $33 million in arrears. Is, is being owed $33 million. Nasini Town Council, $14 million. Mr. Speaker, say what we are now saying is that we want to make sure that the that rate payers pay that. And town and city council administrators appointed by this government are now working on it. They are, they are... Order. Well, <laughs> Order. You can talk about the illegality and legality, my friend. <laughs> uh, but let me, let me say, Mr. Speaker, we, we, we will be considering not only legislative changes for effective rate uh, collecting mechanisms, we want to use other tools that, uh, that, that is there, whether it's garnishing order and bank accounts, whether it's legal penalties and interest, whether it's revamping revenue collection systems, uh, setting up convenient collection centers, public awareness campaigns, proper debt collection strategies. These are all the activities and strategies that need to be put in place, Mr. Speaker said, because if you do not collect rates, if town and city councils are not empowered to have this, the senior town council administrators were left high and dry when they got in there, Mr. Speaker said. And they know, they, they understand the problem, and the people, the rate payers also understand, Mr. Speaker. When you talk to them, they tell you quite directly what the problem is. But that is, that is the point that the opposition and those who raise those issues do not understand. You know, they would do better. Honorable Virendra Lal would do better if he goes and tells the rate payers, look, if he joins the administrators and helps them to collect rates so that the town and city councils can deliver the services. And if you look at the, the, the statement by the chairperson, Honorable Assistant Minister and Chair of the Public Accounts Committee, he's absolutely right, Mr. Speaker, say, when he points out there is a legacy, there is a system collapse of the past that we are now trying to revive, that we are now trying to put in place so that there is a system that works on a regular basis, the system that allows the ratepayers to be part of it. And when they abolished the elected councils, that was the end of it, Mr. Speaker, because in the previous systems, you had elected councillors. So if the rubbish was not collected in our ward, if, the, if there was a problem with the drain or overgrown grass, the councillors knew that. They knew that they had to do something. The council would do something. But when they took over, decisions were centralized, administrators were appointed, they had no interest in going to the ratepayers and making sure. And this government, as soon as it came, we made that decision, the cabinet has approved that, the processes are in place, and once you have that, Mr. Speaker, all these things will be in place, and the ratepayers of this country can expect better services throughout the municipal uh, you know, boundaries of this country. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.